Alright folks, welcome back to BEG Wrestling. We are here with none other than Jaden Cox, folks. Jaden, welcome to the show. Thanks for being on. And uh, before my first question, I just want to say, uh, I was at the Olympic Trials and I myself got a video of you um, leaving your shoes on the mat. <laughs> To be honest, I was tearing up a little bit. Um, now my seats weren't that great, yeah. so I couldn't see. Were you tearing up out there? Uh, no, it was. Uh, I think it's a mixture of things. You know, I think uh, at that particular moment, you know, there's a mixture of things because obviously I'm still a competitor. I, I critique myself on on how I, I've done, and you know, in that moment, you know, it's uh, there's a, a mixed feeling of it being. And I, I told this to my wife. You know, I'm like. This is the hardest thing right now, and you know it sucks. But um, I also told her, but it's also the choice I understand the most. And I think that you would think that would help you, but it just makes it hurt worse because you wish it were it weren't the answer, right? And again, I think people people have a tendency, and myself included, in this like we have a tendency to know the answers to things but deny the truth, and. Um, this was an instance where, like, I knew the answer and I couldn't deny the truth, and it was time to move on. So you knew going into this tournament, if you didn't win, this was this was going to be it. Um, I had an inkling. I wasn't sure, but in that moment, like, I felt that, um, you know. And um, if if I had performed better, even in in the loss, if I had performed better within my, the match I won, and then the match I lost, I, I maybe have been a, I felt different, but it wasn't that. It was. Um, it was something like, yeah, this isn't this isn't right. Like this isn't. I'm not competing with uh, the the passion um, and the love and the fun that um, I should be having. You know, um, and that's not something opposed to having like like tough matches or grind matches. It's just like even in those moments, you know, in in the past of my career, like that's been been um something that's always been consistent with my mindset and my spirit you know, just as myself as a as a warrior in, in the sport itself you know that those things will always hold true no matter what and i wasn't feeling that and like you know i love the sport so much then you know when i wasn't the case happening and i had inklings of like knowing how i felt before you know i've talked about how i felt after messing up my ankle before the final next year before and going through that recovery process and trying to and not speaking about it, but then like yeah. it just showed in kind of front of my face. It was like, all right, like it's time time to walk away and um, get on to the next journey. So it sounds like you're content. Oh yeah, right? yeah. You know, I, I said in an interview, you know, life is my 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 career is. I look at it as like a rocking chair. Um, and you know, I've talked with guys like Kyvan Gatson and Jordan Burroughs. Uh, and uh, I remember Kyvan Gatson, you know, just checked up on me. He was just like, "Man, you doing all right?" Because there is a long list of people who have uh, struggled. Once they've retired, because wrestling is such a post-athletic career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's such a big part of who they are and what, the, or at least what they did. And you know, any, I, sport. any, any oh, yeah. athlete of your caliber, oh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. A yeah. challenge. It's, it's facing you've done life. this at elite level for a long time, or it's just been a part of your life in some aspect in a long time. And so, um, you know, and I and I told him, you know, I was blessed to figure out who I was before wrestling became who I was. You know, so, um, hmm. and so I that's something when I when I walked away. I knew I, I might be losing a part or something that I did, but I, I didn't lose any part of who I was um, when I left my shoes out there. You know, I left my career and my wrestling status as far as a competitor out there, but there was not one piece of Jaden Cox left with those pair of shoes. The, um, that sticks with me, my wife, my kids, and my family. Um, and I think, you know, 
for me, that's the most important thing because that allows me to share more of myself with the world as far as the connections and how I talk with people and how I interact with people. Yeah. Um, and so it's really important to keep that on, on the up and up. And, you know, now, I, you know, and I was telling Jordan that I, I get to live life, you know, I get to live in my rocking chair of looking back and I'm you know, looking, at, looking at the sunset over, you know, whatever scenery in this euphoric yeah. type place I'm imagining in my head. I don't have to dream about what things could have been. I get to reminisce on the th way things were. You know, I've done it. I've been to the Olympics. I've medaled in the Olympics. I've won world titles. I've been, uh, what is it, a, a, a two-time world team champion. You know, like I've gotten to do those things. I've won the NCAA titles. I've had a great career. You know, I'm amongst the list of some of the best to ever do it. I've, I've, it's been this, uh, you know, it's, are. Yeah, it's been, it's been awesome, you know, so, and I've gotten to, to live a life that's allowed me to interact with so many different people from so many different cultures, many di different backgrounds and create friendships and experience, um, kindness and love from a, a vast, um, you know, amount of, of people. And that's, that's something that uh, I hope not only to, to, to never lose, but to continue to grow on. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm sitting tight. And the best thing is, is even while I'm in that rocking chair now, is that, uh, you know, I get to live my life with no regrets on my career. But right now I'm sitting it with my wife on one side of me and my two kids in my, in my arms. And, that, yeah. and that's the journey, you know, out of all the great things I, I've done I've, and, and then my career, my, my journey of my career, this now is the greatest journey that I'll, I'll be a part of. And even in my life, the, even in my life, in my life, the greatest, three, three greatest things I've ever done for my life, you know, have nothing to do with wrestling. The first was I gave my life to Christ. Um, the second is that I married the woman that I did. And the third is that she made me, she made me a father. And, um, and so I guess technically two greatest things I've ever done. <laughs> yeah. One of them she did for me. You know, those <laughs> things are, those things are amongst anything. The bless, best blessings, the greatest things that have happened in my life. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you put in front of it. Jaden, I mean, those are absolutely strong and meaningful words. Folks, I would encourage you to rewind that and just listen to that again. Sounds like you did it the right way. My next question was going to be, do you have any regrets? But you already answered that. So you kind of got into what my next question would be. What is next for Jaden Cox? Well, uh, so right now I am, I'm applying for that EAP position at um, – Colorado Springs for that developmental coaching position. Um, I would love to do that. I see that as a way to uh, work with great lead athletes, but more importantly, um, kind of have a stance to uh, allow me to um, influence the youth, especially going into the, the college realm. You know, these are guys that are going to sacrifice that senior year of a uh, high school and, and uh, look to get better and, and be at the world level. So not only helping them with their athletic feats, but also with, uh, you know, personal life grow as men. You know, for me, um, what, one thing that I've noticed uh, with my career is that the people we've had on these teams, the majority of people we've had on these teams are great people, um, great men, great individuals. And I think that's really important. I think, and, and, I, and I think this should always be upheld, and I don't want our sport to go this way. We should always uphold making good men over uh, making great athletes. So um, that's one aspect I want to implement because I know what I can do for uh, individuals as far as uh, you know, helping them with their athletic career. I know that stuff. But um, the other stuff, I want to be able to help them just you know, think for themselves, um, carry themselves with, with honor. Um, and, uh, and represent their families to the best and being able to help them learn. And that will help them learn to navigate any situation they're in in the future, whether it's in college, senior level, all that stuff, because wrestling is not just a sport, it's a lifestyle. Um, yeah. So it's very important to have who you are um, balanced with the athletics as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, doing it the right way and you're giving back to the kids and the youth um, in the future, I mean, that that is uh, incredible. And speaking of the youth, one question I've kind of been asking everyone, I'd like to hear your short story of just how you got into wrestling, because I think there's a lot of youth kids out there mm -hmm. who maybe are on the fence about wrestling, and maybe by hearing your story about how you got into it, might sway them to get in. Well, if you have a sibling wrestling, for me, it was my siblings wrestled, and so I always had to watch them, and they probably got more attention from my mom or my dad, and I was jealous of it. But honestly, my, my family wrestled. My uncle wrestled first, so my mother's brother wrestled first. My father never wrestled or anything, so... 
Zach and Dre, those are my brothers, grew up watching him, and then they started doing it, and then I watched them. And, you know, I'd be that kid underneath the, the scores table watching matches and stuff. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm like, yeah, why not? I'll give it a shot, and I want to do this. And I sucked. I'm going to be honest with you. Can I say that? Can I say that? Really? Yeah. yeah, I was terrible. Oh, my goodness. My first, my first, I don't think I won a match my first year. Um, I, I don't think Get I did. here. Yeah, I was, I was, was it? I, yeah, I lost 27 matches. So. Perseverance, yeah. folks. Yeah, I was, I was trying to persevere. I cried a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I cried so many wow, tears. Yeah. Um, oh, my goodness. You cried then, but not when you left your shoes on the mat. Oh, that's oh, well, blowing you know, my you mind look, here. You look no. back, you're like, yeah, it, it came, came pretty, pretty far for myself, I feel like. So it was like, um, but, I, and honestly, so to be fair, I did cry away from it, you know? After I was, it. Yeah. yeah, I was a little emotional. So there's a video after I do my interview, like I went and picked up my, um, one, of my one of my girls, it was Zoe, and um, my wife had Phoenix. And so I was walking out in the back, I was kind of by myself, and there was like a little cubby area that led to a door. And like, I was a little, you know, I was tearing up a little bit, and I just went and I sat down. But then like my, and it was like a quick second, but then my, my daughter Zoe just started smiling and touching my face. That's almost about to make me cry. Cause like, oh yeah, you know, cause for her, like she doesn't, this is, it was You're like right hero. there. That was the sign. Like that was, this is what means everything to me. You, you know? saw the rest. Yeah. The you know, this is, this is, this is what I, not only what I want, but it was like actualization. Like, wow, this is, this is more to me yeah. than, than anything. And she's just, you know, gooing and gone and, and smiling at me and, 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 and touching I mean, my face and stuff. It was, it was amazing. And it made me smile. And it just, it, it honestly smoothed over a mm. lot of, of what I was feeling just before that. Right. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, you know, my, my, my brothers did it. My uncle did it. Um, and then I was blessed to have a coach that instilled the love, um, of wrestling. And I think that's, what's really important. It's like, even though I was losing, even though I'd cry, um, I had a coach that made it fun and helped me learn to love the sport um, before I even got good at it, you know? Uh, and just, and I think he did that through community. He did that through, you know, never giving up, never leaving, never, never, he never left anybody behind. He gave attention to every kid as much as he could, right? And, um, and like that alone made it so I wanna come back here. The, 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 the culture's great, the community's great, you know, my coach is great. Um, and win or loss was always A. Good, good job. And I also have to give credit to my dad, too, because my dad, who never wrestled a day in his life, you know, was on the coaching staff. I don't know why he let him be on the coaching staff. Really? Yeah, my dad had no <laughs> idea what he was talking about. The but, mental fortitude. So that's what I was going to say. But he would, uh, he would say, you know, um, he would not let me go out to the middle mat. My own father would not let me go out to the middle mat until I answered this question correctly. He would always ask me, what are our goals for this match? And, like, even when I got older, I would I like even be like, that. uh, he's like, well, what are our goals for this match? And until I said, have fun and do our best. Perspective. Yep. And I then, love that. And then he would send me out. It's like, all right, go ahead. Yeah. And wow. so he would say that every time. So when I got older, I'd just be like, come on, Dad. Let me just go. I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, what's our goals? Well, have fun and do our best. You, and you know what? I mean, through my own experience, that is some of the greatest advice. Because so it's so easy to get overwhelmed when you're only looking at the big picture. And then, to me, my best, uh, my way of kind of countering that is yeah one step at a time just simplify mm -hmm. it what is like what are the goals today what are like what's my number one goal today achieve that and just know you're making progress for sure uh wow Jaden, i feel like i could sit here and talk to you forever i mean i think you should probably <laughs> I got the consider, time i'm retired now remember <laughs> uh, going into podcasting uh in the future and yes. thoughts on that or, or certainly coming back on our show oh yeah so i i'm actually focused on um working on creating my own podcast now it's called breaking barriers um breaking look, barriers breaking barriers so we want to Check focus on wrestling, um, not in the same aspect of like, you know, some some podcasts do like, well, this kid's ranked this and here and there. Would there be some of that? Maybe. But uh, we want to focus on on the stories and not just the we want to focus on because we've been behind a lot of closed doors, you know, uh, myself and the, and the rest of the cast that's going to be on this podcast. So we want to we want to put stuff out there for the world to know. We want to uh, we love we want to do what ifs. We have a bunch of what ifs that come from this as well. Uh, and we want to have difficult conversations you know, with our sports as well. We want to help wrestling, wrestling grow. 
Um, and so that helps. That means in both, you know, having some laughs, but also having the nitty gritty conversations that we got to have um, as well. And I believe that with the, the hosts that we have, um, we can do that. Well, we already have a great list of, uh, of, of, of visitors that we're going to have. So um, we look forward to it. I look forward to it. It's going to be great. Um, but we also want to give a platform to the untold stories, you know, um, especially like with programs like Beat the Streets out there and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a quote, there's a saying that says, you know, and it's a true saying, you know, but Dan Gable says, you know, once you wrestled, everything in life is easy. Um, and so I, I, I do take that quote and I, and I make a little more of a spin on it. Like, yeah, once you wrestled, everything in life is easy, but that depends on when your wrestling match ends. Because some of these kids, you know, especially with Beat the Streets and stuff and some of the stories I've heard, you know, their wrestling practice, their wrestling matches extend past, you know, the, the toe in the line. You know, they have yeah. people who are trying to influence them in certain ways or experiencing things that you or I or some other people never have had to experience or they witness things. That, and so they fight other traumas, other aspects of life that um, we are blessed to not have to deal with. So we want to give a platform to show not only what they go through, but also show what the sport of wrestling is doing for people and, and kids at that in that particular aspect of life, but also show, um, so showing what wrestling can do, but also, uh, you know, garner support for that because, um, you know, we talk about the wrestling community and that wrestling, you know, once you're a wrestler, you're part of this wrestling family. Um, and so we want to spread stories like that as well. But, um, overall, I mean, we're going to touch on everything and we don't want to, we don't want to stay mainline in wrestling, but that's going to be the big, big startup right now is, uh, telling all these stories, you know, letting people know and, you know, giving our opinions on things, you know? So yeah. I think, I think there are two different views in the wrestling world. There's the community view as far as, you know, everyone around. And then there's a, there's the behind the real, closed doors view. The real stuff that's <laughs> right, going right, on. Real, and you're getting the real to views. bring us that perspective. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you right now, you just sold me uh, Breaking Barriers yes. on your podcast. I mean, folks, you're going to get the angle of Jaden Cox, behind the scenes stuff. I mean, and what really is going on and what these wrestlers really have to go through oh, yeah. to compete at this level. I'm talking <laughs> physical, mental. I, I was talking to Coach Zadik yesterday about the team camaraderie, keeping that going. Mm -hmm. I mean... Uh, Jaden, which kudos I, I, to him, honestly, for that. I mean, like, because it's not yeah. it's not easy. I mean, because we're, well, it's it's a lot of different people, a lot of different backgrounds, personalities, big, big personalities, brands, here. right? Like, right. everyone is a brand nowadays. Like, right. Everyone is a, their own business now. So, right. I mean, it's a whole different culture. But uh, Jaden, I, I, if I can ever get you back on the show, I, I would absolutely love to. Definitely. And uh, man, I I cannot look forward to cannot look more forward to your podcast. And you are a brilliant man. I mean, you just offered some great insight and uh, deep thoughts and perspective, man. I, I can't appreciate it enough. This was incredible. Oh, well, thank you for having incredible me. Incredible career, and I, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, you, he's going to be sharing these talents with the youth and with the audience of wrestling folks in the future. Um, Jaden, it's been an honor. Oh, thank you for thank having you me. Thank you so much, man. Best of luck. Thank you.